Hello everybody and welcome to another Pi Game Tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about how we can get our tank to move only when we press a key. So if you remember from our snake game, we would basically only press keys to change direction. So as soon as the game started we always wanted the snake to move. That was part of the challenge of a snake game. But this game isn't the, isn't the same. We only want the tank to move when we want to move it. And so we want to give the impression that the arrow keys will actually move the tank and like holding the arrow key will keep the tank moving as opposed to releasing it should stop the tank. Now, in games, you're going to find that a lot of the things that we do in games are really just kind of illusions or giving a player the impression that something is happening. But if you know what's going on behind the scenes, it's a whole different story. It's not really the way it seems. The same thing is true for like moving things around. So what we do in this event is when we you don't actually as a player have to hold down the key. Pi game doesn't have any register that says player holding the key. But instead what it does have is you can have a key down event, but then you can also have key up events. So for example, we could say elif event dot type double equals high game dot and all caps key up and then we can ask if event dot key equals double pi game dot k underscore left so if we lifted up the left key um, what would we do well we would say tank move equals zero we could also say if event dot key double equals pi game dot k left or event dot key and actually let me pull this up a little bit event dot key double equals pi game dot k underscore all caps right tank move equals zero so if the key up is the left arrow or the right arrow we want to stop the tank movement so what this is is it's events. So, Pi Game again doesn't really register the holding of anything when it comes to keys. Even though, if you recall, it does register the holding of a mouse button because it basically continues spamming. Uh, that, like, say your left key is pressed, the zeroth element in that tuple is one 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 one, and then as soon as you let it go, it's zero. But that is almost because it's just kind of a different thing, I suppose. But key down doesn't it's it's an event it's a one single time action so um, key down only corresponds to the moment you press that key down it does not hold like if you hold the key down it's not like a new event of key down every frame per second so the way that we can give the illusion that it moves as long as you hold the key down even though as soon as you pull held the key down it keeps that movement and really the releasing of the key is the trigger uh, to stop that movement, we give kind of like the illusion that holding the key actually matters. It doesn't. You're just basically stopping the key from coming up and creating an event, not releasing the key down event. So uh, that should do it. So let's go ahead and save and run that. And we'll go play. And you can see we can kind of tap it and the tank moves. Cool. But if we hold it, it also moves until we lift up the key. So it makes you feel like the holding of it is actually continuing to move the tank, but that's not really the case. Um, and so this is also just just in computer programming, GUIs, and games in general. You're going to find that there's a lot of times where you give only the illusion of something acting in such a way, but it doesn't actually act that way at all. It's just making the player or the user feel like it's a thing. It's no different than buttons. Remember that button that we programmed? That's not a button. It's it's just uh, a, a square rectangle, and then it just changes the color as we ho hover over it, and it's it makes it a feel interactive to the person, but it's not really. So anyway, you're gonna see a lot of that in just programming in general. Um, but anyways, uh, that's it for moving the tank around. Now the last thing that we want to do as far as tank movement is concerned is we want to be able to move the turret. And actually we're going to find that that's a little more challenging than, than just simply moving the tank around um, because the length of a line, depending on the coordinates, uh, is going to change. So there's no real easy way to do it. 
So um, we'll probably end up hard coding various positions of the turret, but uh, we'll get to that. So anyways, uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and you've got your tank moving around and stuff. Um, like I said, in the next video we'll do moving the, I guess I said turret, but really the gun. Um, so stay tuned for that, and uh, thanks for watching.